so let me uh, know once again let me formally welcome all the participants uh, to this uh, 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 session 2 on this sky campus season 4 so every time no i think at least three or four times we had a privilege of listening to uh, dr vishwanathan the, the man behind uh, the entire vat uh, and uh, no uh, uh, no at least three four times um, we have listened to him and his thoughts and we we, we got some understanding in, in in at least in south india now it is an all india crowd and everybody uh, no uh, look upon vat and you know, every institute wanted to become vat every teacher wanted to be of high quality like a vat uh, person and we thought it's, it's it's time we listen to a a man who who takes that vision of uh, dr vishwanathan forward and he one who builds the institution as a premier institute in the country so today we are happy to present to you dr shekhar vishwanathan uh, who is the vice president of uh, vat uh, the vat you know the dame to be university uh, he has a strong vision vibrant spirit and energy which is currently making vat is one of the top premier institute in our nation Now, with close to 30 years of experience in both industry and academics, he is a rank holder in you know, electronics and communication engineering. He did his masters in computer science, and more importantly, his PhD is in the area of faculty motivation. In spite of you know his uh, technical uh, background and management background, he took uh, a theme of uh, you know faculty motivation in his uh, PhD. That itself makes us uh, you know be more happy that you know when you are going to address uh, you know so many teachers. no because uh, faculty motivation is the key today when people talk about future of education future of employment or future of entrepreneurship faculty play a crucial role so with with no more uh, taking time let me welcome uh, dr shekhar vishwanathan to address uh, uh, no this uh, audience of educators from across india sir please uh, good morning dr anbu thank you for the nice uh, introduction i uh, i'm so uh, happy to see so many of the Uh, academicians uh, joining this uh, uh, session uh, let me uh, start sharing my uh, presentation slide um so today uh, we are here to uh, talk about um, future of higher education uh, the biggest disruption of our life the covid 19 i mean when we talk about disruption you know we were uh, earlier exposed to the technology disruption for example uh, uber uh, the biggest taxi operator in the world without owning a single taxi or airbnb uh, the biggest uh, hotel operator without owning a single hotel so there's those were some of the technology disruptions which changed our world today it's the virus disruption it's a negative disruption but there are many positives coming out of uh, this disruption so let's look at the current uh, situation first um the lockdown is helping the country to prepare the pandemic but it's not going to wipe the pandemic out the virus they say it's mutating and they say there is a possibility of a second coming in uh, in a monsoon i mean like september october time we don't know if it's true uh, but overall uh, you know 6 to 18 months about 1 to 1 and a half years uh, still looks bleak uh, till uh, a vaccination comes up or we all develop uh, herd immunity um, of course social distancing is critical uh, no mass gatherings so you know for us you know physical classrooms is going to be a problem uh, uh, <clears throat> we should have all gone through a gradual transition into uh, the digital learning uh, online learning but then because of the crisis because of the virus we are all like suddenly pushed into online mode of course we have plenty of uncertainty surrounding us you know how long will the pandemic last uh, when the lockdown lifts what would be the risk of the contagion what is going to happen will the Uh, cases go in lakhs we don't know uh, how long will the students prefer to stay away from the campus of course it's not just the preference of the students it's the uh, environment uh, which is going to allow them to come back to the campus uh, is it possible to maintain social distancing in classroom our dining halls elevators you now it's a big risk we are facing and of course the uh, economy is going to tank which all of us know the global recession is coming so many of the parents 
might have lost their uh, livelihood you know jobs businesses so the uh, you know will the students be able to pay the fees i mean that's a big question mark looming around uh, all of us coming to the predictions of course there's one doomsday prediction which says you know all this physical infrastructure will become obsolete this is a turning point for education and learning will be completely online this is one of the predictions i don't uh, subscribe to that kind of a thought i still feel i mean this is a, a thought of campus learning campus learning is uh, very important it is the best when it comes to hands on projects you know labs skills etc uh, for developing social skills for the uh, students uh, for collaborative learning including multidisciplinary work you know uh, we in because of the kind of nature we go through unstructured learning the students what they learn uh outside the classroom in a campus is much more than what they learn inside the classroom so what we call as the unstructured learning the conversations the students have in the hostel room or in the play fields or in the corridors the contacts they develop the way they form teams and uh, learn from each other there's, there's a lot more going on than what the lecture which uh, they listen to in the classroom so that's an important factor which we should not forget and of course sports fine arts discovery all that happens in a, a campus environment um the experimenting without any bounds you know the team part which i want to emphasize again um you now online teams are great but then when you have a physical campus the grooming of the students to become great team players which will help them in the future is an obvious advantage of a campus learning and personality development of individuals happens without even their knowledge you know when the uh, students especially in the adolescent stage when they are with us for like 4 or 5 years or 3 years you know there's a lot of personality growth which a student goes through in that age and of course the human touch of uh, doing things the kind of proctoring and mentoring services which we provide as teachers uh, to the students in an informal uh, campus environment is a very uh, valuable uh, addition but when you look at the more than that and i just want to mention that after all uh, we human beings are social animals real animals 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 the society and you know even the tomorrow's corporate world it's not going to be completely online there are going to be uh, in person interactions and for which our students need to be prepared you know for example um, if a, a company were to recruit a student who completely uh, went through online education versus a student who has had the experience of mixing with others and uh, growing with a, a well developed personality the company would prefer Uh, somebody who has a good team skill good interpersonal skill etc so uh, that's an important advantage of campus learning uh, which is uh, important on the other hand um, the digital learning how is it suitable for us one is the self paced learning right now our classrooms are not designed for uh, students who are slow learners as students who are fast learners for all of them we try to teach them at the same speed somewhere like the average speed which is not the correct thing to do but whereas in a digital learning the students get to uh, choose their own pace uh, in learning uh, of course timing you know whichever time they want they if it's an asynchronous learning they can uh, look up uh, study on their own time which is suitable for them some might be you know uh, uh nocturnal people some are diurnal you know about our students so whichever suits them and one of the most important advantage of uh, digital learning is that the masses the vast number of students can get advantage of the learning material from the top most faculty of the world either uh, which is right now not possible because 
the uh, best faculty stay with only the top institutions and not uh, majority of the students do not have access to the top faculty so this is a big advantage the scalability what they call in um, digital learning and of course because of this massification of education the cost can be uh, brought down uh, when it comes to digital learning uh, for a country like ours where uh, access to higher education is a problem because of the cost involved the, because of the finances involved this is a great advantage to increase our ger we have been always uh, worried that our ger the gross enrollment ratio is very low in india uh, compared to the developed nations so uh, you know digital learning is uh, one easy solution for drastically increasing our uh, ger uh, and of course digital learning is the only option you have when the classroom is not accessible for a situation like now when there is a, a pandemic um, you know classroom is the uh, not available so digital learning is the only option and use of artificial intelligence and multimedia tools is very easy uh, in a digital environment uh, you know there's a lot of animation you can build in uh, uh, there's a lot of interesting stuff uh, which we can do using the software tools which is not possible in a conventional uh, uh, campus learning model. Um, the other uh, point which I'm going to detail in the next slide, this digital learning is actually more suited for motivated students. And we, will, we will touch upon this in the uh, next slide. So uh, these are some of the major advantages of uh, digital learning. But you know, we, we have to take all this with a pinch of salt. See, if you look at it, in countries like US, uh, the, many of the universities, they have been using uh, digital learning for more than a decade now. It is not new. Digital learning is not at all new. But then, even in uh, such cases, you will notice that the digital learning has not replaced campus learning. The campuses still do exist even after they started uh, digital offerings for 10 years. But the digital learning has added value to the uh, campus learning. Uh, you should notice that um, in a self-learning digital uh, module type, the dropout rates of students has been very high. Uh, you know, you know, as faculty members, we already know that you know keeping the uh, students uh, interested in the classroom is a challenge. But you know, keeping those students in a self-learning format is much much uh, bigger a challenge um, that's why the dropout rates are much higher in uh, self-learning uh, digital uh, formats uh, of course assessment the examinations uh, will be a major uh, challenge in our country um, where malpractices are uh, common uh, this is in spite of availability of some of the top artificial intelligence based remote proctoring solutions. Now we have uh, uh, remote proctoring solutions where invigilation can be done remotely. So even if the students turn their faces or uh, look up something on the net or, you know, uh, try to help from, take help from others, it's still possible to control the malpractice. But in spite of it, it's going to be a, a challenge for us uh, to do assessment. And uh, the labs, um, you know, the real hands-on experience. I mean, the equivalent is, you know, you do some simulation and we are all now trying to come up with remote execution of lab experiments through IoT, the IoT technology, but still hard to replace uh, the hands-on experience, for example, in mechanical engineering or civil engineering uh, hardcore lab. Uh, it's very tough to replace that kind of uh, uh, experience uh, in digital uh, learning. Uh, from the student viewpoint, there are plenty of uh, problems. Um, you know, even basic electricity is a problem in many of the rural and even some semi-urban and urban locations of India. It's a pity that even after seven decades of our freedom, we are still talking about electricity problem. Um, and of course, the bigger problem is good connectivity. Um, you know, those of us who are enjoying broadband connection do not realize 
that a lot of Indians are not having good connectivity, especially if they live outside the uh, city uh, environment. So it's a major problem which uh, we need to uh, solve. Even though um, cell phones are ubiquitous, uh, good 4G connections are still not uh, uh, there in many parts of the rural India. Uh, and of course, we cannot replace the face-to-face -face collaboration and the human touch. Life skills, you know, conflict resolutions, uh, negotiation, you know, when you live in a hostile environment, you, you learn to live with a student coming from a different kind of a family background, from either other uh, with a different kind of a financial background or a different region of the country or a different region of the world. So you would enter into some kind of conflicts with your you know, roommates, classmates, all that you learn to resolve in a uh, physical environment and in a negotiation. Uh, team spirit are best learned on the campus. So, you know, these are like, you know, comparisons. Blended learning will be the future. So what I mean by uh, blended learning, I'm going to uh, talk about it uh, now. Um, it's going to be a combination of digital learning and campus learning. That, that's what uh, people uh, generally call us uh, blended learning. There are different forms of uh, blended learning. You know, a faculty led learning will improve the success rate of learning outcomes. We all know about learning outcomes. Definitely a faculty led learning is, you know, improving the uh, success rate of the uh, outcomes. And uh, we are, when we talk about blended learning, we should be able to differentiate uh, courses which are suitable for digital learning online or courses which are suitable for campus. You know, for example, skill-oriented uh, courses or uh, hardware-based, uh, you know, hands-on based courses are best learned in campus. There are, there are some courses which you can uh, learn very well online. So, Based on the nature of the course, uh, the subject, uh, you know, students will have the choice of uh, doing some courses online and some courses in the uh, campus. And there is also the possibility of, you know, students coming to the campus for one semester and doing courses. And then another semester, they're off campus and still doing courses online. Uh, they should be able to seamlessly move between the online world and the uh, campus. Uh, this will be the uh, wonderful uh, possibility. And uh, I heard that there are uh, some universities in the US which are already uh, practicing this. This is a wonderful flexibility which the students will experience. Um, the disadvantage of synchronous learning. When I say synchronous learning, what I mean is that the uh, students and the teachers uh, are uh, simultaneously engaging with each other. Uh, like in a physical classroom, online also, they get to engage with each other. That is good. Synchronous learning is good, but it's not scalable uh, because we want to reach thousands of students. It's not possible for all the students to be on the same time and ask questions uh, from the teacher, etc. But uh, the asynchronous learning uh, uh, is having some disadvantage. So, the synchronous learning can add value to asynchronous learning. So even by methods like chat, if the student gets a response from the uh, faculty members, it will have a wonderful effect on improving the uh, success rate of the uh, students. And then, uh, of course, there's no point in just uploading the same boring lectures online, uh, creative techniques, uh, taking advantage of the software uh, tools to keep uh, digital learning interesting is very, very important. When we transition uh, a course from um, the physical um, offering to the digital offering, uh, do not just replicate what you did in the classroom. That would be the worst thing to do. Uh, you know, on a lighter way, you know, you, I'm, I'm saying this in you know, in the classroom, regular classroom where you have like 60 students, it's tough to keep them from falling asleep if you have a boring lecture. Imagine you just uh, upload it online. Um, so we need to use creative techniques. 
the learning outcome should be high and equal when a student student takes the same course remotely or on campus that's the ideal thing to do but we are very far from ideal uh, again let me reiterate that campus is irreplaceable uh, you know temporarily we are moving online but then uh, uh, greenery fresh air sports fine arts teamwork creativity overall personal de personal development happens in the campus uh, but for all of this to come yeah, for uh, uh, the blended learning to come where we are not staying just as a uh, physical campus but we are taking advantage of the digital learning in the campus for all this to happen the most important factors are attitude change and faculty training you know uh, all of us know that the most important component stakeholder of an education institution is the faculty member so if the faculty member is not trained very well in taking advantage of this digital technologies and being creative about it then you know this is will fail the entire thing will collapse so even though they say teaching is an art now we made it as a science uh, by coming up with good pedagogical uh, techniques and training programs. So I would emphasize a lot on faculty training. I think that's one of the keys. And of course, attitude, you know, attitude, you know, we, we will perish if we don't adapt and adopt. You know, what, what happened to dinosaurs, right? If you don't change, you are going to perish. You know, the attitude change is very, very, very important. We need to have an open mind. Let me close my presentation by saying, uh, quoting Frank Zappa, a mind is like a parachute. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work if it isn't open. Thank you. Thank you very much for my. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I think you now you, know, you, you have delivered one of the most uh, you know important session at this point in time. You no, know, the one. Uh, you no, know, uh, the first question which popped up just after your first slide was how do, how do we deal with this rural student? Because uh, no, either they have no access to technology, internet. Don't you face those kind of issues with very rural, remote students? Yes, yes, yes. It is a major problem. Uh, one thing is we have uh, 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 asked the government to fix some of the internet backbone problems. Meanwhile, we are saying uh, we could go for the conventional method of like you know printing something and couriering it to them. I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but. Uh, if that's the only solution, we need to be able to do it. But one good thing is cell phone is ubiquitous. You know, cell phone is available. So even though 4G may not be available in uh, some parts of the country, you know, we should we could have some uh, oral uh, connections, meaning uh, audio connections where people can at least listen in through their cell phone mm -hmm. and then ask some questions later on through the cell phone from the faculty member. And we could print and send some material. Because that's what somebody was even mentioning. You no, know, you know, end of the day, engineering is all about hands-on. If we are not able to give that, you no, know, only digital. How is it going to make sense? Yeah. See, hands-on. That's uh, I wanted to mention that now. See, there are. Uh, it's on the nature of the uh, lab. For example, a computer science lab, programming labs. They can be easily shifted to uh, online learning. It's very easy. But whereas a thermodynamics lab, a mechanical lab. Uh, where there are uh, our civil engineering lab where you are doing some testing etc it's very hard to do it online see the weakest replacement is doing a simulation there are simulation packages which we can give and students do it but that's nothing uh, like doing it hands on mm -hmm. uh, one thing we can temporarily do is faculty members going to the labs after the lockdown is over when it's safe with the help of lab assistants you take a video using your cell phone of how to do the experiments and then show it to them and explain to them and post the uh, video on YouTube or some other places where they can access and learn that part. And then when they physically come there, they can replicate that experiment. That's like one of the uh, ideas. The other sophisticated idea is use IoT, which it's not going to be easy, like where students get the control of the lab from their laptop or their cell phone. They get to operate uh, you know, a machine where we have a lab assistant there to make sure that it's a safe condition. Uh, and then they 
for example in electronics they increase the current value and then see uh, the output and all that everything is done remotely but we have a long way to go but technology solutions are available it's expensive there are about one question i think uh, uh, no it's, it's more from the administrative perspective so there are a lot of companies and uh, no institutions or large organizations say that they're going to launch uh, fully online professional courses how do you see that sir as an as an organization um first of all um, uh, from the um, government viewpoint statutory viewpoint i don't think the government is recognizing those degree certificates yet right, right. Uh, only a few, few organizations are uh, allowed to offer online degree program but some small certificates can be taken but not like a full fledged online right. degree program is not uh, recognized by the government in fact aicte has said that engineering program cannot be offered online you cannot have a btech or an mtech online degree program it's still prohibited i mean there are supreme court judgments which prohibit those uh, online degree programs so that's the regulatory uh, point of view and when it comes to social acceptance meaning industry acceptance point of view uh, in a softer programs like computer science it might be more acceptable immediately uh, not uh, core engineering uh, programs but softer uh, other uh, non engineering uh, programs might be more acceptable to the industry as time pro progresses if the quality of education is equivalent Mm. Sir, uh, no, now that you know, uh, because of this emergence of this newer technologies like ML, IoT, data science, this is one of the question there. Uh, do you think uh, courses like Triple E and EC kind uh, will lose its uh, credibility, sir? See, the way it's going to work is, A should not be standalone. Mm. So, if you are learning electrical engineering, you should learn how to apply artificial intelligence in electrical engineering. Mm -hmm. if you are learning mechanical engineering how do you uh, you know learn artificial uh, put up the artificial intelligence or machine learning in your new uh, in, in mechanical engineering so the conventional way of thinking mechanical engineering for example uh, automotive you cannot be still teaching internal combustion engine you should be talking about the electric cars and how the control of electric cars is being done by software right that's the new mechanical engineering Uh, so the conventional way of thinking mechanical engineering should be gone you should be able to take the computer science concepts and apply it to other branches of engineering okay so okay that's fine that's fine now another uh, point uh, no by one of the faculties now see lot of uh, no, there, there will be definitely tough in areas like uh, wet lab simulation for example chemistry labs and things like right. that and you know many people are you know researchers are working on mathematical modeling for which you no know, high end of the laptops high end of the software will be needed so you know in this digital era it is going to be normal but uh, you no know, any comments on that area sir on mathematical area sir, sir when, when it comes to research what's going to happen is again if it's a research which you can do it with your laptop fine you can do it from anywhere you want but if your research depends on the physical lab you need to do some you know culture development in your biotechnology lab or your chemistry lab or your mechanical lab so it is going to be physical campus only so research cannot be done just by simulation alone you know you need to do a lot of experimenting you need physical uh, instruments to deal with especially high end instruments so that cannot be you know obtained in your home you know you know high end uh, traveling uh, tm and traveling my electron microscope it cross lacks and lacks together you cannot duplicate such facility so still campus cannot be replaced for uh, research for such environment but you know just doing a computer science research you know you don't need a very high end uh, uh, hardware you will be able to do it except if you are relying on a supercomputer which you can remotely connect and do it okay so one last question do you think the role of teacher will go down or the role of teacher will have a hit because of this digital learning sir role of teacher is not going away the teacher is here to stay but teacher needs to change you cannot be a dinosaur you cannot be following the conventional methods unless you adapt and adopt you will perish so please open your mind and change your teaching teaching methodologies we have been always saying this 
don't go for the conventional lecture make it interactive bring in more uh, visuals audio visuals and all that we are being forced to do it now so change yourself and you will survive if you don't change you will not survive simple but teacher is here to stay okay sir thank you thank you very much sir thanks a lot no thanks a lot for the message it's uh, my pleasure thank you hundreds of faculty are asking your presentation and your recorded you now they wanted to reach it to more faculty members it's timely that you now we had uh, listened to you because you now once we listen to uh, the the key man of vat which means you no know, that's kind of listening to the entire industry's mindset i mean academic uh, industry's mindset thank you very much for giving your valuable time sir if there is any other questions i will you know mail it to you you can help us answering sir sure thank you thank you thanks a lot sir thanks a lot sir